All right, the coffee is on. The lake does not look like that. And this band was Studio on the Lake. Hey, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, Jordy Johnson from Carving Fusion has uh, done a few little clips that I added in. We're going to make up story about a master's in business administration uh, learning to carve with just a bench knife. He's going to carve a love spoon. And uh, the, also Doug Linker will be on there. Uh, I pulled a few of his clips. Check out Doug's site. Also go over and check out Jordy's site. Hey, this uh, MBA is 30-something successful business is going good he's in his mid-30s he's got money he's got time to come home finally uh, a little bit earlier rather than work all night so he's coming home at night time and he's seeing this happening his wife is sitting there with the lights off she's got a glass of wine she's sighing heavily and she's watching doug linker back again uh a couple days ago, I put out a video carving uh, this fella here, and it was just uh, on the fly carving, just made up as I went, and that's what I came out with. So that video was short and sweet. Okay, so here we are. She gone, bud. She gone. You sure shit the bed on that one, didn't you? She gone. She gone. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Just a matter of time till she's gone. Tick tock. Later. Hey, thanks, Jordy. Hey, uh, this is a Ramelson bench knife. You can pick this up for around $20 from Amazon. And I'm going to take you step by step. This is an actual learning video. Find yourself a pattern on the web. You won't be able to copy it exactly, so you don't have to worry about infringement and stuff. But uh, get your pattern in mind what you want to do you're going to do a love spoon you're going to do that for her so you're going to probably end up with a piece of wood like she this she gone bud she gone uh, I don't know you're trying to keep her that's what you're trying to do here so here's a piece of basswood I cut it roughly to make it look dimensional like you might pick up from the lumber store uh, roughly draw your pattern in here you don't have to be able to draw to do this sort of stuff here I'm not going to copy this exactly as you can see uh, my drawing skills are somewhat lacking and I, I'm thinking initially right here uh, being a little bit shorter than I wanted to get those hearts in there I'm gonna probably make the bottom round all right so you get that knife and the knife is all you have the first cut you're gonna do what you're gonna have to do here uh, you don't have a saw, I'm going to assume, so you're going to have to carve or whittle, as people say, away all the outline. I cannot tell you that part right in there all has to go away. I can't tell you how tempting it is to get out of the chair and walk over to the bandsaw and cut that piece out in about 20 seconds. Uh, this is going to take a little bit longer. All right, so I'm using a pull stroke. I've got my thumb against the back there. You'll notice that my thumb is down to the south. It's out of the way of that knife. Although a couple times I am pulling through, but my thumb is out of the way. Other times I'll stop pulling short of cutting my thumb. So think of this as, as peeling a potato or a paring cut. If you go back and watch several folks uh, and there's a bunch of excellent ones out there. Doug Linker just happens to be one of the most excellent uh, teachers out there uh, teaching you how to do knife work, basic knife work. And there's several others. They, they try to tend to boil it down. They'll say four cuts. I don't know that that makes any sense to me. This is a pure whittling cut. And wood carvers, if, if you, I think if you go to a wood carving school over in Oberammergau or somewhere like that, uh, the teacher would probably whack you with a stick for carving that way. But that's reminiscent of everything a kid used to do or old men in my youth. All the ranchers that I grew up with around had a pocket knife and they'd pull it out and pick up a branch and whittle away. To some carvers, that's a derogatory term. But in my opinion, call it what you like. Uh, 
just do it. Okay, so this is a V cut, and I'm cutting down. Both of those are going to act, the bottom of that V is going to act like a stop cut. See the top when I'm coming down, that's a stop cut, then I'm coming back at it from the bottom. And I'm just removing a wedge. Think of an axe taking a cut out of a tree. You, you do a, a hit higher angle down, and then you do a hit lower angled up, and that piece in the middle wants to chip out. Now here's the edge, and I'm just going to round that over real quick. All kind of the same cut. And notice again, I'm keeping my thumb down out of the way. There are carving uh, safety gloves out there that you can put in your uh, hand so that you don't cut things. I haven't uh, had a good cut for many years. You can see on my right hand there, there's a little nick on the back. That's from reaching underneath my chisel rack, which I do on occasion. That's pretty stupid because those chisels are stuck through the rack on the bottom. It's open, and for some reason, I felt the need to reach my hand under there and grab something. And uh, bad idea. Okay, so now here's a little different cut. You can see I'm holding that knife. Uh, backwards from what it was before and I'm levering that off of my thumb and it's just kind of a slicing I'm pushing it forward with the thumb and rocking it a little bit and then I occasionally I'll even give it a little bit of a pull now look at all that wood that has to come off of there again temptation run over to the bandsaw temptation as we go further on in here to reach over and grab a chisel or temptation to, when I get into the end grain there, or something that's a little bit more difficult to do with a knife, grab the power carver, which is set right beside my chair. But you're an MBA, you're trying to impress the wife. I'm coming back to the pattern, just gonna refine it a little bit. Trying to impress the wife with your carving, you're making her a love spoon. Uh, in the old uh, countries, uh, a lot of kids would carve this for their girlfriend or prospective girlfriend trying to entice her uh, if you listen to historical documents they go into a bunch of crap uh, I think to some degree because everybody basically had a skill set they could build a chair they could build a table that's what you did if you needed a chair or a table this supposedly is to some historians is to show your prospective wife or girlfriend that you are capable of putting a chair together and her house would be nice so we've evolved well beyond that i left this fairly thick you draw a heart in there you of course can do whatever you like we're going to call this uh Masters in Business Administration, this banker, this investor, or whatever he is with a suit. We're going to call him John. We're going to call his girlfriend uh, Robin, Rachel, an R, just to give you an idea of how to carve those. Now, this is probably the trickiest part of the carving when we get down to that. And I just put a plus in the middle. Again, going back to the old days, those kids a pocket knife you know teenagers got a pocket knife he walks over to a tree while he's having a picnic with his girlfriend he carves his initials and her initials into the tree they give a big uh, a big smile and cut that in there nice and deep And I, I did include Doug in there. Uh, he wasn't a volunteer. I didn't give him a heads up on that I was going to do that. But uh, hey, free advertising is free advertising, right? And uh, Doug does some excellent stuff, so go over and check out his site. Okay, so now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. The rest of that, you can see it leaves, uh, a knife leaves a real nice faceted uh, cut on the edge there. And that 
polishes up real nice with just some wax and ages beautifully. Uh, at the same time that the wood is or the knife is slicing the wood, it's also burnishing and polishing. This time I'm using a really light, uh, well, medium to light, and I'm falling around there. I'm in the end grain. The end grain is difficult. The end grain runs up and down vertical on that piece from the top to the bottom. And when you're coming across like this, that's the hardest part. I'm trying to stay in the lines. Now I'm just taking a little sliver out of there. Uh, you only have a knife at this point. This is a point where a lot of people would pick up a V gouge. And I, you saw me waving it back and forth. I'm doing kind of a sweeping uh, cut there. And as a, the top direction I'm cutting against the, uh, or across the wood grain, you can see me turning this thing around and around and around. That's the hardest part right there on the bottom. That's the end grain section. So there we've got that roughed out. If you've seen me do some other videos, you, you see that I forgo a lot of this. I'll pull up the wood burner and put that stop cut line in there and either follow it with a knife or follow it with a power carving. Round over the end a little bit. I've talked about working on pieces before. You want to turn that thing around and around and around and not spend a whole lot of time on any one section and just work it down. There's Jordy again. Uh, you should go over and check out Jordy's site. I, I really enjoy watching his videos. We're trying to put together a little group and, and give shout outs to each other and let more people enjoy the, the, the art part about wood carving. You don't need any special skills or artistic talent. You'll find that if you put a knife in your hand, it, uh, it's relaxing and you can create something, waste some time. Either that or you can sit and watch reruns on Netflix. All right, so I'm just kind of making it up as we go along. Decided that the, to define the outer portion of that heart a little bit more. did speed a lot of this up after we talk about the initial cuts and we are only working with this knife many character carvers uh, will work with one or two knives only okay okay so here, okay. We, are. here we, so are. we are okay okay so here we are here we are the guy keeps okay. popping in you can see Jordy's a lot more animated than I am and it's a, but it's good fun uh, spend some time watching his videos. He's up in Canada. We're down in uh, northern Wisconsin here. He did give me a really good shout out for the channel and a bunch of you guys uh, popped in and subscribed. And, hey, I thank you for that. Uh, that's what it's all about, sharing this stuff. Rounded the heart out a little bit. It's difficult to do with a knife. Uh, the knife blade is flat and doesn't like to carve uh, round surfaces. And then when you've got a ledge on the outside of it like that, the temptation to grab a chisel is, is pretty high. At this point, I'm thinking uh, in the middle there, I kind of want to put a little diamond in. We get a little bit into chip carving with this somewhat, uh, very little into chip carving. Some of the chip carving is amazingly beautiful and there are a specialized set of knives uh, to do a lot of that. Keep in mind, this was in the old days, this is something that uh, someone would do primarily, I would think, in the long winter or at night when uh, they're sitting inside by the fire, getting ready to go to bed and uh, just trying to pass the time. A lot of the European countries uh, that are famous uh, 
up in Germany in the Harz Mountains and that sort of stuff. Uh, they did a lot of wood carving. It turned into an industry. Folks sitting around carving different figurines. Yeah, that's see we're getting off to a good start. 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 We're getting off to a good start. Start. We're getting off to a good start. There's a slice cut. I'm, I'm trying to keep the facets. Uh, yeah. uh. <laughs> trying to keep the facets on that thing uh, in a diamond shape. Keep in mind uh, while you're doing this, I think you'll find this really relaxing. Have a little bit of a, the, the, I keep talking about the temptation to grab another tool. There is something relaxing. If you're not doing a video and you've got all morning or all day and you're just messing around, wasting time, it is relaxing just to sit with a knife and, and take these things apart one by one. I mean, I started carving with a knife and then picked up a set of chisels and added various different tools over the last 30 years. I am stabbing this in a little bit. We're going to get more to a stab cut when we get into those uh, letters. The letters are tricky and the reason is uh, you're, you're relief cutting or you're raising, leaving the letters and trying to cut the ground away below them and if you're not careful this is where you have to learn about grain uh, you'll push your lever and uh, part of one of those letters will break off and your design just changed itself or uh, in the case of a really bad uh, slip or accident or break into the fire sometimes a piece of wood you'll work you're working with won't cooperate and uh, you just need to toss it in the fire and start over again. If you're already a carver and you know how to carve, this is probably driving you nuts. Uh, all the little pieces but this is for that MBA remember he grew up in the city he gets his coffee from Starbucks every morning well not anymore a secretary goes and gets his coffee for him now but I think he'll be real happy with this the result of it it appears that Jordy would disagree. I'm doing stab cuts there, and I, I am cutting that end grain. I want that, that plus is probably one of the hardest, and there's the way the grain runs. It's easy to cut with the grain. Cutting across the grain is when you start to run into a bind. Now I'm just pulling little slivers out of that around that. That R is problematic. The up and down, not so much. When you get at an angle like that, coming across the wood grain, it's really easy to chip a section of that out. When you're choosing a knife, uh, several people make, not just the Ramelson, I, I just happen to like the Ramelson. The price is good, the quality is good. Um, this one I haven't gone and pulled the finish off of it completely. Uh, you'll see some of the most of my knives and tools, I, I pull that finish off. I don't, it gets slick with the oils from your hands, and I, I want to be able to hang on to it. I'm slicing that end grain, and I'm going a little further than the sides because I don't want a piece to be hanging in there and chip out. There's the chip out. This is where the truth is told if you've got that end grain cut. You see, I work a lot faster when I'm, I'm confident pulling larger chips out. And you can see I slow down when I went around the bottom curve of that, that R because I, I want to make sure that that doesn't break out and run 
just like splitting kindling for your fire. Something we don't want to do. So there we go. If I wasn't doing a teaching or uh, kind of a lesson a video here, I would have probably done a lot more finish work on the top part of that and the hearts and whatnot. This is kind of fun right here. I got lazy. I saw that J in there and I crossed it out and it, I thought his name was John and apparently his name is Thomas. <laughs> he has a, the T is much easier to carve. If I'd have been smarter and planned this a little bit better, I would have changed the woman's Don, name. Don, 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 Don. Hey, thanks, Jordy. Hey, I'm going to send Jordy some of this basswood uh, that I, I cut and dried. He, he can't get basswood. Uh, he tells me up in Canada. And uh, I can't get cotton bark, and I, I've never carved cotton bark. And I, I'd like to try it with some spirit carvings, all of the spirit carvers. And, people that do fairy houses so we're gonna trade some wood I'm gonna uh, slice him up some chunks of basswood which carves real nice with a knife uh, a little bit less so it gets a little bit of fuzz on it when it when you carve with a power carver uh, but it, it it works fine There's the trickiest part to do with a knife. A, a knife is not designed to do a bowl or a shallow. Uh, and you can see I'm gonna do this in steps. So I outlined around that thing. I don't want it to chip out. That whole liner is a stop cut. There's a stop cut on the bottom where it would, if I didn't do this, it would just chip all the way down to the end of that piece. So here I am, I, I pull that first step cut out of there and then I'll do, just do successive cuts. The, I have to do smaller and smaller cuts to get the angle down in there. Here's where I really wanted to grab a gouge or a spoon knife or a power carver and, and take this all right on out of there. I'm taking pretty big chunks off of the end there now that I'm, I'm confident it's not gonna split and I'm doing the second step down in there. I'm trying to keep it relatively smooth on the edges so I don't have to go back, but I, I will. There's a little bit of that lever cut going in there. I'm pulling pretty hard, but you, my, my thumb is away uh, underneath, either under the wood with a stop cut to keep it from jumping off of there. Always be cognizant of where your next cut's at and uh, you won't cut yourself as much. Initially, you'll probably get a few cuts. Uh, hope not, but uh, maybe even a few stitches. Now I'm getting down to just about the amount that I can get with that knife. The hardest thing in the world to carve is round. The grain goes every which direction. You can see that grain splintering and shivering, or uh, splitting and running down at the bottom. I'm carving from where the grain, across the grain, and then just kind of breaking it out. You can do it with a knife. Depending on how well this video is received, uh, I think I'll, I'll do the one with the same character. And this time, his uh, next time, probably, uh, I'm thinking maybe don't know. Up, oh, company came. This is my young, young Mastiff. He came out in the studio and decided he needed a head rub. And he, he won't go away. A little bit too big if you go over to Stennett Sticks and check out uh, some of his excellent carving. He's got a, uh, a terrier sits on his lap while he carves. This character is not going to be able to sit on your lap. Okay, we're doing up the finished cuts. You'll notice that I didn't go all the way out to the edge when I started uh, doing that, just in case some of it tore a little bit. 
and now I'm just going to continue to slice with the grain or across the grain to get that bowl a little more defined. Time to make it look less like a chunk of wood and more like a spoon. Back to where we started on the back. I'm just going to round that over a little bit. Doesn't hurt to put reference lines in to give you an idea where you're going. Once you pull off a corner like that, it's hard to figure out where the center was at. That's just kind of cleaning up the back, the limitations of a knife again. doesn't want to reach into the center there. That cut I'm doing right there, that slicing uh, cut, leaves a, a wonderful little faucet on a facet on the back of that thing. And if you grab a piece of sandpaper and go over that, you, you'll take all that away. There's something to be said. Uh, the character carvers, again, take a look at Doug Linker. Uh, doing some of the best work out there right now. Uh, the, it's the planes and the sharp uh, cuts that the knife leaves shadows on your work and really makes it stand out. You can't get that with the power carver. Yeah, and see we're getting off to a good start. Hey, thanks Jordy for checking in there on how we're doing. Uh, do keep in mind I'm, I'm keeping an eye on what you're doing on your videos uh, it's obvious that you're keeping an eye on what I'm doing we got a couple people we're gonna bring in and uh, trade this back and forth so if you like this stuff make sure you, you comment and uh, we can do more of this tick tock tick tock tick tock just a matter of time till she's gone tick tock grumpy Jesse if he gets out of control uh, he might annoy me someday if he were to hang around too much and I might just open up the door to the pot-bellied stove and chuck him in there. You'd be hearing bitching then, right? There's what that knife uh, does to the back. Really a neat look. You hand that to someone and they like to run their fingers over that and uh, run their hand, rub it in their hands. Keep working it over and over again. And... Yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo. I'm talking. I'm yoo -hoo, talking stove, buddy. Yoo -hoo, yoo -hoo. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. He's an interesting enough character. It'd be kind of sacrilegious to throw him in the stove. There is something peaceful about uh, taking up carving. You can do whatever you like, however you like, and it can be just for you. In this, this case, in the scenario that I dreamed up here, this is a guy trying to impress his wife or girlfriend to show, him, show her that he has a few more depths to him. But by and large, most people don't care. You gotta do for yourself do something that gives you pleasure. I think once you take up carving, uh, Mike over at Stennis Sticks talks about carving. All these guys do. Doug does. Uh, Jordy does. It, it gets in your blood. And it's just a great outlet. And, and at the end of it, you've got something to show for it. It can be done anywhere. The early days, I'd carve in the living room with the chips and the, look at those beautiful faucets on the back of that, or facets. I can't say that word for some reason. Uh, all told, the carving of this thing probably took uh, three hours. 
uh, with the filming and stopping and setting stuff up I decided to do a little bit of a shell thing in the top there that's getting in the chip carving realm you can make these as elaborate as you like going back and, and defining stuff you're playing with shadows here there really is no need for sandpaper I will use a little bit in the bottom of that bowl to smooth that out there you have it uh, I can't get the knife down in the bottom of that maybe if this video turns out good I'll go back to that hey here's a technique I'm going to show you that I do I, I take the ends of my knives and I, I carve them to a point or carve them off now I'm going back in and I'm burnishing that wood down around the, the letters there this is a basswood's fairly soft and it takes the burnish real well gives it a shine and a polish and smooths out a little bit of your, your some of your cuts there but it does leave the cuts whereas if you were to sand this it would uh, and you could go back and get all those little pieces out of there I did not because this was teaching and I'm trying to get the project done not spend uh, 10 hours making every cut and every every little knife mark that's left on there look good I'm thinking we're gonna call this this done uh, Thomas and uh, heck I can't remember her name now Rachel Robin he's gonna take that in some night put on his flannel shirt uh, that he picked up from the Goodwill or something like that I was gonna say 50 cents but my daughter said dad you can't buy a shirt from Goodwill for 50 cents anymore look more like five bucks so that's the end of that and I hope you like it I hope I didn't offend uh, Doug Linker on that by picking on him a little bit uh, and Jordy thanks a lot man uh, it's great fun watching your stuff that you do and I hope all of us carvers can get to get together and share this with other folks be sure and check out Doug's stuff he does great my name is Jordy Johnson my name is Grumpy Jesse and this is Carving Fusion by Jordy Johnson see ya and that's Jordy and uh, Jesse thank you my friend and this is Ben have a good day <laughs>